If you remember from my last video, I told you that Skydio had exited the consumer market and we'd no longer be able to buy that excellent Skydio 2 drone. I also said that there hadn't been any major improvements to their X2 military drone and Enterprise version that they had and questioned what they were doing. I thought surely by now they would make some improvements in that X2 drone. Well, they made a liar out of me because yesterday they just announced the Skydio X10 drone with massive improvements over the previous X2. It will also come in an Enterprise version and a Defense version. To give you some quick specs on it, it's got a 45 mile an hour top speed, 40 minutes of flight time, it weighs about four and a half pounds, and it uses a three blade prop, and they're saying they're using that to reduce the noise signature of it. Size-wise, it appears to be about 50% larger than the Mavic 3, and on about the same size level as this new ACL Soton that I talked about a few videos ago. It has a range of seven and a half miles, can be deployed in less than 40 seconds. And it's got an IP rating of 55, meaning it can resist some dust and some water. One thing I like about it is it's modular in design. Now currently they've got two cameras that are working on a third. That means with one drone, you can have three camera options and swap them out at will. Their first one is called the VT300Z. It comes with a 64 millimeter narrow angle camera rated at 64 megapixels. It has an f1.2 lens and a 50 degree field of view. The second camera is a telephoto camera with a 190 millimeter lens. Now that's slightly bigger than what we get on our telephoto on our Mavic 3. It has a 48 megapixel rating with an f2.2 lens and a 13 degree field of view. And finally, it has a radiometric thermal camera made by FLIR. It's the Boson Plus series, the first to appear on a drone. It's a 16 millimeter equivalent. It's 640 by 512 pixels with a 41 degree field of view and high sensitivity. The second option is the VT300L. It has the same narrow camera option at 46 millimeters, 64 megapixels, and a 1.8 lens with a 50 degree field of view. Now its second camera has a one inch sensor, 20 millimeter lens, 50 megapixel rating, an f1.95 lens, and a 93 degree field of view. The third camera is the same FLIR Boson that appeared on the Z series with the same specs. But in addition to those three cameras, it's got a 2800 lumens flashlight option available too. The FLIR camera is called a radiometric camera, which allows you to get pixel accuracy on your photo. So you can tap anywhere on that video there and get an accurate temperature reading. You could even identify a person on a rooftop in a totally dark situation. Skydio says they're working on a third camera, which will delete that thermal option for people that don't need it. One other thing they told us was that this telephoto camera is so good, you can read a license plate from 800 feet away. And they actually demonstrated that. And they compared it to the Mavic, one of the Autel 4T models, and the Matrice series. The Matrice was really the only one that was comparable the others were far less readable. Skydio has always been the best in obstacle avoidance, and it's no different with this one. But with the additional computing power, they've actually increased that by 10 times. It can now see smaller obstacles, work in lower light conditions, with a massive overall improvement in obstacle avoidance. Each of the new cameras on this drone, the ones that appear on the alarms, are 32 megapixel with a 200 degree field of view. And as with previous models, it does not rely on GPS, so it can operate solely autonomously in GPS denied or dark environments. Even EMI won't affect it, so it can continue even in a high EMI environment. If you watched one of my previous videos on the paired Anafi 4G, I talked about how it can operate over the 4G network, which was really revolutionary at the time. But what Skydio has done is have it give it the ability to operate over the 5G network, meaning you can fly this drone from anywhere. So let's say you had a group of police officers, EMS people, whatever. One person could take that drone to the field and set it up, act as a visual observer, and then your pilot, who could be anywhere else in the world, frankly, could operate that drone. And 
so that pilot could be located anywhere and still fly this drone. During the demo, they actually showed this. They showed an officer go out, set up the drone, call into a pilot who was located somewhere else, have him fly it, and then the officer on the ground could look at the problem there. Just think of the possibilities here. This means you could have multiple drones located in all parts of the country with only a handful of pilots in one central location. And anytime you had a need to use that drone, send your local personnel out, set it up, act as a visual observer, and then that remote pilot can fly it. I think that's an incredible option right now. And one other thing came up I'll get to in a minute. They also equipped it with something called Night Sense, which allows us to fly in total darkness, but it's got additional lights on there that can light the scene. And they had to custom make the cameras so it could deal with that flashlight light as well as the ambient light, which of course doesn't exist. They're also including this 3D scan software, which allows the drone on its own to develop a 3D model. But what's going to be different on the X10 is now you can preview that model on your controller without having to upload it to Drone Deploy or something like that. So that's an incredible upgrade too. Some of the other accessories we're going to have for it are, of course, a speaker, a light, an RTK module, this Night Sense module, and a few other things they're working on. Oh, and they also have a parachute option too. I thought it was kind of interesting. But their general plan for this drone is to use it as a first responder. I Meaning if a call comes into dispatch somewhere about a problem, whatever it might be, you send the drone out first, and then local personnel on the ground will catch up with it and have that information before they get on the scene. They didn't really give us any information on the controller, so I'm not really sure what's up with that. We'll have to talk about that later. But you know, something kind of interesting happened during the, the webinar there. I know you've all been on webinars, and generally on the right side of the screen, there's a chat box or a chat window. And you can see people asking questions and getting answers and stuff like that. So I kept monitoring that as I was watching the webinar. And about halfway through the webinar, this one pops up from guess who? Elon Musk. And his first co comment was, can I invest? I'm sure that was a joke. But a little later on in the conversation, someone else asked a question about Starlink. And with Elon's response, it appears as though Starlink is talking to Skydio. Now think about that partnership. If you can have a Starlink, Starlink system attached to that drone, you can operate that thing anywhere in the world, just like our military does. That could be a huge, huge deal there. And I'm anxious to get more information on that. And of course, finally, price. Well, they didn't talk about that. I guess that's one of those things where if you have to ask, you probably can't afford it. But for the people that need it, for search and rescue, for fire, for police and things like that, capability-wise, it's a pretty incredible drone. What I have found is they say the pricing is probably in line with what the X2 was. I don't know, 20 grand, 30 grand, we don't know. I'll try to get more information on that later on. Now, I've got an opportunity to see this drone in early November here locally in Tampa. So I'm going to go take a look at it, get what information I can get, and report back to you at that point. Really interested in it. It's certainly not something I'm going to buy, but for a lot of people out there, it might be a real option. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. And if you feel like sharing it with your friends, please do so. That would be greatly appreciated. And as always, Thank you so much for watching. Caught behind the Venetian blinds How to reach for the city lines And this thing where I belong